So I'm going to watch this video, Don Lemon's personal take on Jesse Smollett's fiasco. You gotta remember, I don't need to mention this, but Don Lemon had gone on to um, the Red Table Talk, which is a show with, uh, what's her name, with J Jada Pinkett Smith, her daughter Willow Smith, this is Will Smith's wife and daughter, and another lady who looks to me could be Jada Pinkett's mother, I haven't double checked, but he was talking about how Oh, it's very personal for me. I've been tweeting. Um, I've been sending messages to Jesse, Jossie Smollett every day. Is it Jesse or Jossie um, every day? And um, so I'm going to um, go here and and we're going to watch this video. And I'm just going to give some commentary. Uh, hopefully, this doesn't get flagged or anything. But anyway, I'm, I'm going to give some commentary on the stuff because just watching the start, he's already mentioned some things that I'm I don't really understand if people get when they actually say these things, how it comes off, at least how I'm reading it. And I imagine other people will read some of these things in a similar way. Or maybe I'm just weird. I don't know. I mean, there's got to be a few other weird people out there. I mean, every kind of thing. There's a bell curve of anything. There's a bell curve of weirdness, of the way you look at anything. There's got to be a bell curve of people who are allergic to peanuts, and then there's someone who's like, don't. I guess it's like, no, that's not a good thing. I think it's more like, how you perceive the world depending on things there's going to be a bell curve for everybody who finds like clowns very just terrifying for some reason they just terrify the clowns then most of the people in the middle are just like man clowns they're supposed to be funny right ah, they're just these things these people wearing these things fitting in these cars and then there's going to be a small fraction of people who just find clowns the most hilarious thing ever so Maybe these, some of these things I'm seeing, for most people, it's like, what, what are you talking about? But I guess some people would see it. Anyway, let's go into this. This is what we know. It was the early morning hours of January 29th. Smollett had just gotten back to Chicago, posting on Instagram that he had just spent seven hours on a plane for a flight that was sus supposed to take only two hours. He told the police that as he was walking back from a... Okay, now with, with, that, with that part right there... Um, I've seen that being covered, and somebody was, this is again, allegedly with all of these things. Um, they said his notifications being on the plane were actually notifications for the, the brothers, because uh, I don't know if he's going to go into the whole case. But if you're watching this video, hopefully you've actually gone and you're aware of the entire thing, because I don't know how much he's going to develop in there. I'm more analyzing what he's saying, Don Lemon is here saying, and what I know from having spent a decent amount of time going through these things. This thing has been very enthralling to me, because I think it's a really big point. It's a big turning point in, I think, in the, in the culture in the United States of America and the world in general, I think, in extension, because this this sort of thing happens on the regular, not the attacks, because America is one of the best countries to be in for anyone. If you're a Negro, if you're a Caucasian, if you're Asian, if you're if you're gay, if you're transsexual, if you're all these things, America, United States of America is one of the best places to be any of those things. But there's still a large group of people in the United States of America who think it's a horrible, at least say it's a horrible place. But they wouldn't say it's a horrible place and stay. Because another thing that's positive about being the United States of America, you can leave. You can go pretty much anywhere. If you're American, you can pretty much go anywhere. Like Most countries will accept you to come into that country somehow and establish yourself and work and do things like that. But they stay. So they may say one thing, but they don't actually leave. And there's many reasons to not leave a place. But anyway, so as I was saying, the two-hour thing, I saw a report saying those two brothers who were involved in the attack with him, who, who accused Jussie of setting them up for the attack, they um, might have been notified by him saying, okay, I'm late, I'm two hours late, so we're going to have to move this back or, or whatnot. And, and another point is people are wondering why those brothers were let free or why they they have been arrested if they were involved in this. There is no crime about doing a fake attack in the in the world. Like you can go out there, we, me, and any other else can go out and do a fake attack, and just be like, okay, yeah, nothing happens. As long as none of us report it to the police, that's where the crime comes in. Doing the fake attack. Otherwise, you'd go to like Hollywood to TV shows, and whenever they're acting some kind of a scene, you'd be like, okay, yeah, those people. We need to take them down. Like you, you've done a fake attack, so uh, that's why they haven't they haven't committed a crime by just doing a fake attack, unless they find out more information that they were actually involved in the planning and reporting and all that. So there's, there's levels, I think, of um, probability there. Sandwich shop, the subway sandwich shop. That two men attacked him, putting a rope around 
his neck and, quote, yelling out racial and homophobic slurs and pouring an unknown chemical substance on him. This was all... Now, this is true. Uh, it was, it was, it was, it was, it was, yeah, it was in the interview of The Chappelle Show with, uh, with uh, Rick James. He was like, oh, this is true, this is true. When, uh, when <laughs> Charlie Murphy was, was retelling his story, his story and then uh, Rick James was like, this is true. So this is true. Um, some people were wondering why would anyone yell MAGA country? And true, there was different variations at the start of the story about what was said, who said it. And they're like, oh, Trump supporters wouldn't say MAGA country. It is an odd thing to say. I think I might have seen it in passing in some blogs written, but just here, probably, yeah, this is MAGA country. I haven't heard, I haven't heard that being done. But uh, apparently the, the brothers again said they actually did set it up and they did say all these things. So the script for this whole thing could have been better, but I, I don't know. Um, I have some, I have some... I think he might have done it expecting it to be filmed and then not actually press a charge because a lot of these fake, um, another, another reason why people also wondering with the brothers, why the brothers not arrested, sure. Why have other hate hoaxers not been arrested, not seen some actual time involved with what they do? Because they don't report. They go in the court of public opinion. Like I saw this actually being wrote somewhere. He might say this later. I saw a headline saying Don Lemon says, um, Jesse Smollett has lost in the court of public opinion. I don't care about the court of public opinion. Is it a crime or not? Forget this public opinion thing. I know there's a level of people who would care about that, but when it comes to something like this, is it a crime? Have you broken the law? Should you be should you be held accountable for that? This public opinion thing, I think we need to stop just putting people in public opinion and crucifying them before we actually understand what has actually happened. But um, all these other people, I think some of them were smart enough to know they shouldn't actually go and put a go uh, put a false report because that's when the police can actually the police and other people in law enforcement can hold you accountable for that well in the streeterville neighborhood where he had been staying i know that neighborhood very well i worked there for three years at the nbc tower in streeterville so i know it very 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 now there my lived experience in this situation, it might give you some extra um, extra knowledge to to the location. But as you saw with that like, Google Maps, eh, there was this thing that happened. There was a um, what was his name? I forget his name. There was there was um, a congressman or a senator Swalwell. I think he's running for president. He's a Democrat. He was in New York City, and um, he was like he pointed he posted this photo. It, was, it looks like it was flurries in the back. There was some snow on the ground. He's like it's snowing. And the, I'm, I'm going to mock his voice because it's a mockery thing. I might put a picture out. But anyway, he was like, it's snowing and the only, the only, uh, I need a cup of coffee and the closest place is Trump Tower. I'm going to, this is me walking down to another place. And then people were savaging him in the, um, in the comment section, rightfully, because I'm like, why are you posting a selfie of you like this? The virtue, 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 virtue. I'm here, virtue, virtue. The virtue signaling was too much on that. Even people were just like, "Come on now, this is this is this is absurd." And and then somebody was like, "I'm here in like Idaho or Iowa or something," and I could tell you, there's a Starbucks like one minute away that's closer to you than um than the Trump Tower one because he had a photo and there was like a Fendi store in the back, so they could find out where he was on Google Maps and then they could actually go out and tell. So you can tell locations. You don't necessarily have to have lived in the location in order to know that location. I've lived in a lot of locations that I know in some ways I like walking around the place but then anyway you can see how people know that now here with Don Lemon he, I guess he values a lot in the lived experiencing but right here when he's saying I have lived in that place if you saw that location waterfront area it's a really upscale location it is not and it's, these are the people who are like we are actually one of you we are talking to you guys we know how it feels to be all of you and then they wonder why so much of the country is recoiling away from them. This whole elite saying, this whole like, we are the people, these other people are against you, we're actually looking out for the general people. No, Don Lemon. Embrace the fact that you had that life. I am telling you, like, I am, I may have lived in some situations where I've actually integrated with just, I guess, the general population of any location I've been in, but I'm not going to claim that my lived experience is anything average. I've had a rather odd and in a lot of ways privileged life so you can take 
you could take what I'm saying with a grain of salt, but what I try to do in my channel, what, I, what I'm going to try to continue doing is just talk about words, meaning what they mean, defining things as they are, trying to understand things, being open to you guys correcting me on things, because I don't know all these things. I'm telling you what I see from my point of view. I'm trying to put it in the plainest way possible. I'm not trying to say, look, as a this, as a, an African, as a Kenyan, as an artist, as a this, you have to take my lived experience as an above, as making me an authority on this. I'm like, look, I have said this, these things that I happen to be may color what I do, may inform the way I look at the world. I'm letting you don't know that, but it doesn't make me an authority. Take what I'm saying for what I'm saying. So with this situation, I think it's just showing that, look, you're an affluent person. You're talking about how the country is against blacks, against gay men, yet Jossie Smollett himself is a really wealthy person living in that place, comes from an entire family of actors and actresses that do all these things, work with the president, the former president of Obama. They, they've had successful TV shows. They've, they, they, they're, they're doing good. They're doing pretty well. They are the 1% technically. And yet, apparently, this is a country that's just hating, that holds people like him down. Which one is it, Don Lemon? In a supplemental interview with authorities, Smollett confirmed what he had already been what had already been reported in the media, claiming that one of the attackers also shouted, This is MAGA country. In those early morning hours of the 29th, Smollett took himself to Northwestern Memorial Hospital with a friend. So again, now he's giving you the I think he's retelling this in it's seven minutes. I think you're going to get into a lot more detail about this. But as as I mentioned before, um, this the reactions, I have done a previous video about this, reading some reactions of people that came out about uh, January 29th, January 30th, um, without any of this information out. People were asking, did this MAGA country actually said? Did he say there were white people? How many people were there? Is there film? Is there this? Is there that? Yet people were reacting, saying, this is proof. This is proof of how racist the country is. How could, how dare you say allegedly? This is 100%. I saw one comment just recently. Somebody was, was responding. I think it was here on the share uh, thing. Um, look here. It says, um, this is horrific and sad. Um, okay, anyway, so this is Cher saying that. I think I read what Cher had said in, in the previous video. But you come here, um, it says, okay, you can see Feb January 13th. And I don't know if Twitter just works like this, but very few people actually come back to the thing. But you see some people coming in. So the 18th was already when the, when the Nigerian brothers had been caught. They were trying to say that uh, Jesse Smollett was actually, um, was actually, Jesse Smollett was actually, planning this thing so it wasn't out yet the cops hadn't released a full actual um statement yet but uh, last night they actually did the indic i think the the um, Osar osandario brothers and um and some and the police presented information to a grand jury and then the grand jury has uh, now um has now i think charged uh jesse smollett well anyway so that happened last night, but you can see it was already coming out. People were like, we already mistrusted it, but with all this information coming out, we kind of believe what the brothers are saying. It makes it fits more to the information that's been out there. Uh, Jesse Small is actually getting lawyers. But look, I just don't understand how they can say possible. The only thing missing from this vicious attack was a burning cross. That is an absurd thing to say, Lucy. An absurd thing to say. Um, look, here. He's gotten hate. He's gotten hate letters with MAGA written on the envelopes. Where where is Trump to decry this? Kim Chakru, even that is being looked on under by the FBI because in the Osandario brothers' home, they found magazines with letters cut out. And these people, I'm like, I'm glad that criminals and people who do this are dumb. And this is why I'm wondering. The Osandario brothers, they may actually just have thought this was just. I don't know. I'm not going to assume here, but. Why would they keep all that evidence? Why would they be on film just buying stuff? Why would they keep the evidence in their home? I don't know if they just weren't aware or Jussie thought it was going to come out and then they never have to charge. It will just be a thing where it's just like on the media and then you can say like, oh, I'm brave. I'm not going to actually press any charges because it was an interview you had with an ABC person. It was an ABC correspondent. And he was saying, you know, one of my friends, he said, honey, they're not going to find these people. And then he was, he kind of, he was crying and he said like, you mean I'm just gonna I'm just gonna be here? And then he's talking about how he's strong and all these. He said he's a gay Tupac and all these things. So maybe he thought, or they thought it was just going to be caught on the street camera that was actually facing a different direction. And then he was never actually going to press any charges. And then from there, it was just going to be a thing in the social media, in the court of public opinion, and everyone would crucify the people who he supposedly attacked him. And maybe that's what they thought. That's why there was so much evidence left out. Or maybe they're just dumb. This kind of happens. 
um fake hate crime is a hate crime um great meme by steven crowder here uh it's i mean steven crowder did this thing where he was like it's his change of my mind series where he writes something and this is change of my mind people come and sit and talk to him but this meme this meme template has been used very effectively in many different ways. So let's go back to the Don Lemon video. Um, as I was saying, people jumped on things without information coming out. And very few of those people, even those random people that I've been clicking on that. And let's see. Um, let's just check right now. Um, so Kim Share. Um, let's see if she has responded at all. Uh, open a new tab. Uh, there's a lot of comments coming here. Let's see if anyone commented to her. No, that's... Uh, I'm, I'm thinking I'm going to start using Twitter more, but uh, it's like one of these clicking things. Anyway, um, so yeah, so here, um, you're guilty of rushing to judgment. I, let's see if, if she's actually responded. Um, I don't see any Kim Share. I don't see Kim Share here. No, no Kim Share. Uh, nope, nope. Um, did she actually respond on her wall? Nope. Uh, February 20th, this posting about Barack Obama, uh, Michelle Obama. Um, world changing women so you can see there's 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 a certain type of person that, that does this so when you go to this thing she, she's into these kind of social movements and whatnot um yeah the government is paid but both sides of the government are paid uh retweeting Alyssa milano Alyssa milano was also she had a post saying how could anyone do this i can't believe and that's a positive thing in my opinion that these people still actually think that there's no way somebody would lie about this. So when they hear the media talking about hate crimes in our rise, they just take it for granted that it is. They, they don't actually understand that it's more people are reporting. So like I mentioned uh, previously, the world is getting safer, yet it seems more dangerous because there's more information. In the past, it might have been a thousand attacks in a year, a thousand hate crimes, things that could be qualified as a hate crime in a year. But you'd only have maybe 100 reported. Now, there might be 300 hate crimes in that year, but you'll have 250 reported. So now it's going to seem like there's a lot more hate crime, yet it's dropped down to 300. Like, you'll hear about all of them. You'll hear the grimy details. You'll see images. You'll hear the stories from the, from the victims. Whereas in the past, you might hear about... 100 reported, you might actually hear about 50 of them, you may actually read and know details about 20 of them, you may actually see about 10 of the victims. But now, those 250 that are reported out of the 300, which is a lower number now, you will see and hear from maybe 150 of these people, or 100. So you will see and hear and know details about more victims than you they actually were reported a few years ago. Doesn't mean they weren't fewer crimes so people go with that and um so yeah she hasn't responded she hasn't really talked about the thing i doubt we're going to see her um mention anything about anything um in this kind of situation let's see this person who was talking about the burning cross uh lucy lucy's here now um no uh i doubt i doubt you'll see this um yeah so no lucy probably won't come in here and uh and mention anything about about anything pretty much um, for her, it's a kind of thing, and you know, that's the thing, like the hands up, don't hit thing. This was um, the thing. I have a series about uh, Black Lives Matter, and um, this is Black Lives Matter in the kind of situation where uh, the hands up, don't shoot thing was found to be false. It didn't happen. Michael Brown did not put his hands up and say, don't shoot, yet that's been a thing. It's It raised the conversation. It raised awareness. So for a lot of people who still follow that movement, the Black Lives Matter movement, and use that, they still think it was factually happened. They think that is part of the example of how racist America is because they don't come back. They don't circle back to these things. They go on with their life. Let's see if we can see if Lucy has gone on with her life. Eight hours ago, uh, please don't talk to Teresa about any more words. Um, see here, now she's moved on. She's um, moveon.com. You see, yes, she she hates uh, she hates uh, she's not she's not a fan of Trump. I don't want to say hate. Hate is a you see that's even like the words need to mean word. Like hate to me is a very severe word. I don't like using hate. I don't like using sorry. I don't like using love. Those are very. I think those three are very three specific words that are very overused. So when I find someone who uses the word love just flippantly, oh, I love this. I love you. I love this. I love. Eh, I'm like, eh, do you? Do you? Do you? Um, hate also it's like uh, dude I dislike there's, there's a spectrum there's a, there's a spectrum of feelings on these kind of things and love is on one end the very small like the bell curve spectrum kind of thing this love is on one 
end of the positive meter that should be reserved for very few things and they hate authors on the other end of the, of the, of the spectrum. Should be, there's many, many, many beautiful words in the English language between that, those two things to kind of define what you feel about something. And I, you can commit a crime against someone without having to hate them. If I go to like, yeah, it's, it's no, but there's always a level of dislike and disdain for whoever you commit a crime against. If I go to like a store and I steal a candy bar, candy bars, then I have some kind of distaste for the people who made those candy bars, the store, this is the general law of the area. I just have some kind of disregard for them. I don't hate them. But then now if I'm like, okay, I'm going to go to a specific Korean place because these people have come to our neighborhood and they, they took our jobs and uh, things like that. And if these Koreans weren't here in our neighborhood, we'd have more jobs for my people and things like that. Then like I specifically keep stealing from that place and don't even eat the candy bar. Just throw the candy bar on the ground just to somehow like take away some money from them. Now that's like some dislike thing. I don't even think it's hate yet. It's definitely on hate, but it's still like some kind of targeted thing. So um, anyway. Anyway, so, um, unbelievable. Republicans don't want Trump meeting privately with Mueller, but they're okay with him meeting privately with Putin because Putin is a leader of another country. President Obama has met privately with uh, all presidents. Just, uh, uh. Yeah, I'm, I'm still here. Uh, it's, uh, uh. So yeah, uh, no, uh, she hasn't mentioned anything about the Jesse Smollett thing. She came out there, she talked about a burning cross. Burning cross. Burning cross. And no, she's left it at that. It's just a burning cross. Done. This is going to be a long video. <laughs> uh, let's go back to, um, let's go back to, what's it called? Let's go back to, let's go back to Donald. There we go. And as you may know, Jesse is gay. And since 2015, he has played a gay character, Jamal Lyons, on Empire. Oh, we know. It's not as you may know. I guess it's as you may know, because people may have not known this story about Jesse. But everybody was, as a gay man, have been attacked. As a black man, have been attacked. Not as a Jewish man, because his father is Jewish, partially Jewish or something. At least he's part Jewish. You could have said it's anti-Semitic. But there's, there's, no, there's no points in that kind of... He decided not to cash that card in, but as a black man, there was some of the targeting that was saying this is horrible because Trump is bringing hate and Trump tards, MAGA people, they hate gay people. Even though Trump just apparently recently his his government just he's he's his I think the State Department or somebody said he's going to do a international movement to crim decriminalize uh, homosexuality and because homosexuality is still actual law by law. You can get jail time, fined, some places killed for being gay. Those countries still exist. Yet there was Out Magazine wrote that, no, this is just Trump using, uh, using queers and disadvantaged people as a tool. Yet the Democratic Party does that on the regular. They're the identity politics people. They're the people who divide people up and say, we're fighting. They specifically say that. Ah, they specifically say we are fighting for your specific group's interests instead of just saying we're just like Americans in general trying to make the world better for the country better for everyone we're for, you gay people you black people you women you this you that we are for you we are targeting you we are using you use us let us use you so that is some kind of next level kind of projection type of things that I see in this kind of situations. And it's, I think more people are going to see this because for me, it took me a lot of time to just delve into this information, get more and more information, have a lot of free time in my hand and choose to actually get this information in. And then eventually I started seeing these things. And what I've seen over these last three years, two, three years, I mean, three, four years since Donald Trump started running is more people getting access to the internet. There's more and more examples of these things. Um, Andy Ngo over here had had this one series. He's just, he's just a guy who just started and he just started collecting these things, and uh, it's it's amazing. People are going to start seeing this information and start understanding that uh, things are not as they seem. So it's a little bit personal for me, and I'll tell you why. Because that's when I met him. I was asked to come on the show, play myself, and a little cameo. I got he said he introduced himself and he said I, you know, I'm a big fan. I, you know I love your work. It's good to have you here on the set. Very nice guy. We. Okay, two things there. The first thing, uh, I love you. I love your work. I lo again, Jussie just throwing out the love out there. 
people just I love this I love this I really no 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 that you don't love his work you may really like it you may admire it there's other words you can use but if you just love 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 you're just throwing it out you're throwing it out in what's love got to do with it what's love got to do with it got to do with it? so it's like um yeah it's it's that emotion is very precious to me and that word is very precious to me you use it very infrequently and save it for things Another reason it means a lot to him is because he's also a gay black man in the United States of America. Um, and another, I don't like how um, actual supposed serious reporters and news people who are supposed to be telling you factual things go on made up things and act as themselves on that. I don't think they see this, but to me, it's like, look, you are on Transformers or you are on some kind of completely made up show, made up like media form like a tv show or a movie and you are telling lines about things that are supposedly really happening in a completely straight face without any like show to look different than when you're telling me in my real reality world news so it's re to me that reduces your credibility if you're building a brand of trustworthiness if you can tell me these lines on a, apparently in a real story that's really happening, exactly the same way you can go to this fake show and talk about Transformers blowing up a city and things like that, and your face is also just completely the same. You seem to, you look the same, you're telling these lines in the same way as convincingly, then how am I supposed to know when you're just outright lying to me? Like, no, 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 you should just, you should just stick. I mean, you can go on there and you can act as a different character and things like that, maybe things like that. But um, just have somebody else. You're also taking jobs away from actual actors, Don Lemon. You're, you have your job. Why don't you just say, okay, I'm, I'm Don Lemon. This is my job. Instead of doing this, find another gay black man who looks similar to you, who may be an actor, who may need to get some kind of spot. And then you say, when you need me to be on there, this is my... This is my go-to guy. This is my like actor double. Like, and then why don't you give this guy a job instead of me coming there to do a thing? But uh, you know, that's that's just some thoughts. This could be a really long video. We're already one thirty-three. I'm about to break this video up into two parts. Oh, oh, and the last thing. Did you guys see it? Did you, did you guys see it when he said he's a really nice person, and he looked off to the side? I don't know if he was somebody, but he was realizing something where he's like, if you think. A really nice person can do something as horrendous as what Jussie Smollett has reportedly done. What does that say about your judgment of who is a bad person and who is a good person? If you thought, if you met him and you know him enough to be texting with him on a regular basis and you couldn't tell that he was this capable of this level of outright horrible behavior... What does that say about you talking about what actual threats and challenges they are exist in the world in general? To me, that just ruins your credibility. That means like, these people, I just don't understand. If I was in a situation, I'd be like, dude, I'm shocked. I don't know what I missed. People need, people hardly talk about that. They're like, this guy, this person was amazing. Like, dude, I, I'm like, I'd be like, wait, I, I must have missed something. I need to go back and recheck the relationships I have in my life why I don't see these signs, because these things don't just come out. I mean, they could be a brain aneurysm or something, but Jussie Smollett, as we'll find out, he might mention, has had previous issues. And said the letter might be fake. Apparently he had a DUI and he said he was his brother. So it's not the first time he's lied. He's also an actor. So these people act for life, for, they, they lie. They pretend to be other people for our life. So it's- Well, times anyway. after that, I saw him, maybe when he came to New York, a couple times. I know him, not best friends, but I do know him. So I spoke to him while he was at the... Not best friends, but he was talking about I was texting him on the regular. It's a personal thing to me, on the red table. He's already kind of walking some of those things back. His friend who was there texted me in the middle of the night and said, Hey, this happened to Jussie. I called a friend. The friend happened to be there. And he, Jussie, he said, Oh, Jussie's here. Here's the phone. So he told me in his own words what he said happened. Imagine that. Imagine you supposedly being in a country that's so racist that you have to hire Nigerian brothers to stage an attack on you, and you also have the access to somebody on one of the most one of the most famous international news channels. You have the ability to just send him a text and tell him what happened to you, 
and just converses. You, you're that close of a degree to this person. What kind of level of power and achievement do these people have to achieve before they'll accept that they're not some kind of un disprivileged, oppressed minority? That yes, you as a black person can have an entirely different existence life than your average black person. You as a gay man can have an entirely different privilege. This, there is a way in American society, in the world, in wherever you are, to achieve levels of just power that is unimaginable and reach than that most people in human reality have ever had, in human existence, human history, recorded human history have ever had. Yet, we're still more, more oppression. But I've also got to tell you, to be quite honest, that a lot of people, including people in the community, people of color and gay people, had questions about this from the very beginning, the veracity of this story. A lot of people were reasonably skeptical about Jesse's story. Some of the details just didn't seem to make sense. And a lot of these people were quiet, as they should have been, but I don't know how many sources there are of those people in these supposed communities who actually came out and said, hey, let's not rush to judgment, let's actually, and I know mostly you hear the silent, the, the vocal minority in pretty much all situations, you'll hear a vocal group of, like I said, there's another bell curve of people who feel like communicating, the people who or on either end, there's going to be people who disagree, there's people people who don't dis don't agree. Then there's people in the middle who just don't care. And then there's going to be a few people on one end that disagree, that are going to feel we have to talk about it. They disagree strongly enough to talk about it. Now there's going to be a few people on the other end who feel we agree strongly enough to talk about it. And then depending on the situation, you're going to ha have more of a focus on one people on the other end or the people on the other end. But I would like to see some of these examples of the people that he's talking about that came out and maybe maybe told the people on one end who were just blaming people on the right, blaming Trump, saying this is an example of how racist and, sec and um, homophobic America still is. If there were any of these people in the community who were coming in and saying, hey, by the way, we don't really know the information yet. This doesn't really pass muster. How does this, why are these people walk here on the bleach at the middle of the night? Why is, why is he not turning in his phone? But that didn't happen. I know Don Lemon didn't. I don't think, I am pretty sure Don Lemon didn't say any of that. So, um, yeah. And as we always say around here, facts first. The facts raise a lot of questions. At least Lemon. told CNN that authorities had video of Smollett entering the lower Chicago Come after on the alleged attack. And he still had what appeared to be a noose around his neck. Police spokesman Anthony Gugliani said that Smollett told detectives. There's already people in uh, the African American community and Black Twitter, and there's this apparently called Black Twitter, where it's like a lot of Black people talk about different Black people topics, a lot of channels and things like that. I went to like the root a lot more than I've ever been at the root, which is like an Af a Black site, uh, a Black focus site. It's like the Huffington Post, but for Black people, I think. Um, um, it goes in a situation like that, uh, and a lot of people are talking about how untrustworthy the Chicago PD in particular is. But you have a lot of people who are supporting, who are anti-Trump, who say like, police, police are, are untrustworthy and you can't trust the police. They, they, they're going to, they're going to release all these, they're going to leak all these bad things on Jussie Smollett, which kind of shows that the Jussie Smollett thing is, is fake. Like they're trying, they're trying to, they're biased. They're trying to, they're trying to hurt him. We can't trust the police. And these same people will say, Oh, with Donald Trump, yeah, he's the police are completely trustworthy. Like, yeah, all these leaks, oh, that doesn't matter. I mean, this information is coming out, but Trump is definitely a Russian plant. We have to trust the law enforcement. We have to trust what they're doing. Oh, don't worry about those leaks. He's a Russian plant. So what is it? These be consistent. I don't I don't really expect I think there is some consistency. It's just not consistency to the thing. It's consistency to the light to the worldview that they have. They need to consistently back up their worldview with different things. So they're going to omit the information that doesn't fit in it and try to tr try to shape anything to that worldview that they have. But um, so there's already people in the community already going out and saying, no, we don't trust the, the Chicago PD. And there's a big thing in the African-American, the black community. I, uh, anyway, in the black community about just mistrust of the police and things like that for various reasons. Uh, some... Um, a few of them that I think may have some some warrant, but I think most of them are are not un, are rather unwarranted. Um, and get into that into other videos. That the two men who he said attacked him yelled "Empire" and a slur against gay people and "Empire" in word. And then there is the letter on January twenty second, a week before the alleged attack. 
what appeared to be a threat. That is one thing that I did see in a lot of the in a lot of the sites. At least some of the pushback coming back to those initial stories on the on the, the black, like the root and things like that, and some of these other sites like hip hop news. Uh, people were just like, "Wait, you guys are, t- are supposed to tell me that some people who are strong MAGA enough to actually get out in a situation where they're going to fight some people, beat somebody up all over it." are also watching Empire. Like, that's... You know, the, the Empire thing shouldn't have even been mentioned. That's why... I mean, if anything, the Empire thing, to me, kind of makes me think, like, okay, it might have been targeted towards the show. The fact that this letter he's talking about was not sent to his home. I think it was sent to the set. So this could have something to do. Earlier stories were talking about how Jussie was actually about to be written off of the show, uh, off of the Empire show. And then um, the, the Fox people came out and said no. And then uh, they, they cut back some of the scenes once the, 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 the brothers came out. And he might just say this later. I might be just telling you things he's going to say. Um, the, the cops came out and they said, okay, um, the Alcindario brothers have said Jussie Smollett hired us for this. So the Fox kind of cut back his scenes this week and things like that. And now they're talking about, okay, we might have to actually fire him from the show. But um, that's that's where we're at with these things. That's why I think it might have been targeted towards something happening with the show. Maybe his character is going to die off. It, it could be all these kind of things. But um, anyway, letter containing a white powder was received at Cinespace Studios in Chicago. That's where Empire is filmed. CNN has obtained a copy of that letter last week. Now Sorry. this letter, this letter, now this. Look at this. Look at this. I am thinking, did this guy? bring in a child into this? Did he involve children into this? Because this drawing... I don't know. Okay, I, 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 I'm, I'm an, I, I do some art. I, I, I draw some things. This is my, 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 my background. Sorry, I almost cursed. I'm not cursed. I'm going to keep this. There's this reasons I want to avoid cursing, and, and I'm going to get into that soon in a video. But uh, I, I, I draw. I mean, so, so for me... I'm wondering, what what kind, who's drawing stuff like this? Who who's doing that? What what's what's going? What is going on with this? It's horrible, horrible. So I'm thinking like you have to be a child, but then maybe full on adults. And that's the thing. People, are, I realize my drawing ability is better than probably ninety nine point nine percent of the people that have ever born lived in the world that that we know of. I think I'm better at it than them. But the people who I actually look up to, there's there's probably a, there's countless, there's millions, millions of people who are better than me, who I'm trying to get at least a, approach some of the skill levels that they have and who just blow me away. I see this stuff, I'm like, wow, that's amazing that you guys did that. I wish I could do that stuff. But at the same point, so maybe with something like that, that might be a thing where I'm in the 1% of the, the people with visual arts. So I look at this and I look down on it wrongfully when maybe this is like the average ability that your average adult has, like, but damn, <laughs> what? When I first saw it, I thought it was, no, it's, ah, anyway. So yeah, uh, that that was a letter, the, the cutout stuff. Come on, man, that is. My person close to Jussie Small. That is, that is It included bad. a message apparently cut from magazine clippings and a stick figure drawing, which like Jussie this- described to ABC News as a stick figure hanging from a tree, which had a gun pointing towards it. The letter was addressed to Jussie, including and included out of the envelope in place of the return address. Authorities determined the powder was aspirin, but declined to give details on the content of the letter and said the FBI was leading the investigation into it. The FBI. What's the FBI? Yes, because now when it comes down to it, that is a different case. Right now, he's facing up to three years. I think the the, the maximum for uh, false charges of felony, class four felony, it's up to three years in jail. Um, but what he did with the FBI now that the thing is with the FBI that could cross uh, it could cross state lines. It can become a lot bigger crime. He could face a lot more time with this whole situation, wasting the resources of the FBI and things like that. So th- that gets into something else. But the return address of MAGA, it's just. To me, the kind of character that people imagine people on the left, on the right, political right have, is just crazy. Why would you do this? Who? <laughs> These people really think like Donald Trump has empowered racists so much that they can come out and write stuff like this. But these kind of people, wouldn't you want to also signal? I mean, I think like the people who actually, when you see some situations, like the some serial killers, people who just really dislike people, like they just don't care for people. 
they normally go out and they'll they might be very cryptic about what they're doing like the zodiac killer as it still hasn't been caught ted cruz no i'm kidding but <laughs> he still hasn't been caught but he had some kind of way of identifying things but it was very cryptic it wasn't just like maga in crayon or whatnot or marker whatever the hell that was garbage but um or you have things like the DC sniper situation, uh, where that guy was shooting people from the back of a car. He wasn't leaving notes. He was he was trying to he was trying to keep killing people. If if you truly hate these people, why would you just be like attract attention to where you're coming from? Like you would do these things. But I guess the KKK kind of did that, and that's also something I'm saying. I'm so glad some racist, ignorant, criminal-minded people are that dumb. I guess like, they were wearing masks anyway and things like that. And people are like, oh, the red MAGA hat will be remembered as. A, in the future as a, as a white hat. The white hat that some Democrats have been shown wearing, that, that white hat, the white hat that was started, like there's a power military wing of the Democratic Party, that white hat, no, 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 the, the, the MAGA hat's conservative on the right. It's it's not going to, it's not going to be the same. But anyway, um, so this whole kind of situation, they think people on the right would be that blatant with their hate crimes and things like that. I, it doesn't, to me, it's, I, I'm, no. That's trouble. Police said they received what they call limited and redacted phone records from small end. All of that raises, honestly, so many questions. As there was an excellent comment I saw on the route. Uh, it was somebody who's actually a tech. I think he's he's a crime scene investigator. He's involved in the tech department. And this one thing people see CSI and shows like that and think, oh, that's how it is. The amount of um, the amount of actual police agencies that have the resources to do like a fraction of the tests that you see being done on every single CSI case. This crime scene investigation show uh, where they go in if you, nobody has, if people aren't aware of that show where they go in and they kind of do forensics and things like that. There's a lot of different shows like that, Bones. Um, pretty much all the police procedural shows will have some, at least an aspect, NCIS and things like this, they'll have an aspect of some kind of um, high-tech sort of um, forensics department. And those things are very expensive to do and very few people actually have the ability to do it or the resources to do it. So the amount of money that's being spent on some of these things is does get kind of steep. So it's not really done that frequently. So I'm kind of wondering, like, how many people really expect all these things to be done in these kind of situations? And and I think that's uh, kind of lost my thread for thought in a bit here. But uh, yeah, so with that, I'm kind of wondering how many people actually think this is actually done to that level. So when the FBI gets involved and all these other people get involved, it gets really expensive and then can get to some really tough situations where now you're actually charged for doing that false report and wasting resources, diverting resources to these other things when they can be solved in these other things. And you already see the actual solve rate of most crimes by law enforcement is very, very low. It's frighteningly low. I think it's a lot lower than a lot of people would expect. But yeah. As I said, there were incredible reasons to be skeptical of this. And there were a lot of people. Oh, what I was talking about was the, the tech. So the, this guy was a tech and he was kind of showing how like, yes, um, what happens with these kind of things they they have certain um, technologies where they can go into your phone and copy the records. They're not going to keep your images. In, they can even just copy the entire phone. But it's not like, you know, the guys were like, some people are like, he's not going to go in there. He doesn't want the number of, like, Viv K. Fox or these celebrities that you have. They don't really care about the pictures that you have in there. They're trying to get the phone records, trying to get some of these basic things. But on top of that, they could have this information anyway. The cops are allowed to lie to you during an investigation. Even if you come in and report, they don't have to tell you everything that they found. Even if you're the supposed victim, they don't have to tell you that we have um, we have people who saw what happened. We have witnesses ready, or we have some possible um, some possible people who are suspects. They don't have to tell you anything. They come in, they ask you. That's why you're allowed to have a lawyer, even if you're reporting a crime. You're allowed to have a lawyer because the lawyer can tell you, okay, you can say this, you shouldn't say this, you can say this at this time, this can be used. You know, you have the right to remain silent. Anything that you say can and will be used against you in the law of court. You, know, you can plead the fifth in that kind of situation because they could have that information anyway. They could have found a way to get all that information from his phone, know the phone logs. Like the Austin Dario brothers had already come in. So they could have been asking for the phone to kind of see, okay, th this was very early. So they, they asked for his phone to immediately to kind of see who he was talking to because he said he was on the phone with his manager at the time. And the manager did confirm that he heard the whole like MAGA country thing because the brothers said, yes, we were paid to yell that. One of the brothers said, I was paid to hold the, the noose. I held the noose and I put it around his neck. Some of them poured the bleach on him. The other one yelled MAGA country and then they ran off. Uh, so that 
that kind of thing was there. So that was actually there. So they're kind of just getting to corroborate that way you really on the phone. But after a while, once the brothers come back in, if the brothers weren't using burner phones or something else, they could actually have gotten those logs already from the brother's phone to see like, yes, we actually have gone to this situation. We have talked to this. But they might be able to subpoena or get this information from actual um, actual cell phone companies. I know the cell phone companies have some uh, rights, some kind of... Um, the cell phone companies have... What's it called? They have user agreements where they can't share your information with other people. Now, that agreement might not be violated by them sharing it with the police, but the police can't use it admissible as evidence in a um, in a court case. But they might have ways to actually know that information. So anyway, um, the, the guy, the tech, was, was writing and saying, like, yes, what Jesse Smollett did probably was try to use some different kind of uh, open market apps. That it's not really some low-level stuff to actually hack into a phone and actually get all this information out. And he printed out a PDF and it was redacted and things like that. So um, the cops could have had the information while he put put this other information in. Who's going to be out in the frigid cold streets of Chicago in the middle of the night looking for an Empire star? You've got to be bundled up in that kind of cold. How would they even know it's you? And let's be honest. There are probably not a whole lot of MAGA fans watching Empire. Now, right here, Don Lemon is saying these things now. He's saying these things after weeks of being quiet. Um, weeks of not really expressing any, hey, let's wait and see what information comes out. Um, I saw somebody say like, oh, even Trump was, even Trump said like he was asked about this, uh, he was asked, he was in the Oval Office doing some kind of thing, he was asked about the Jussie Small thing, and then Trump's response was literally this, was like, you figure to, I, don't quote me, but I think it was pretty much this, paraphrasing, he said, he looked back at the report and he was like, yeah, I heard about that, that's very horrible, that's all he said, and, and people are using that as an example to say that Trump was also the, the people who believed Jussie. Trump was also the people who were saying, like, yes, just we believe it was a hate crime. No, Trump could have just been that. First of all, when you're a politician, when you're a public figure, that's a I, to me that's a very appropriate response to give. If more, if more of these people actually just left that response, if Cher was just like, yeah, that's that's a horrible thing that happened. Uh, it's. I wouldn't be sitting here on Cher's page look, going through the thing and wondering. But there's people on Cher's page, there's other people involved in this situation who went to the point where they said it was not just a bad thing. We're missing burning crosses. This is because of Trump. They were, they were putting in other intentions and things into the situation. And to me, that's where I'm like, hey, you guys don't know these things. But Trump was just like, yeah, that's a horrible thing. Because I could seriously say that and be like, okay, that's a horrible thing. And he meant that's a horrible thing that somebody would fake this. That's a horrible thing that somebody would lie to the police about the hate crime. But they are going, they, like I said before, people are going to hear things and they're going to consistently match it to their, um, to their worldview and things. So that's, that's, that's kind of what, what I'm talking about with that kind of situation there. And that letter... It looks like something out of a bad movie. Why not just hand over your phone to police? Yes, there will be things on your phone that you want to keep private. But if there are also things that prove your story, isn't it worth? I, okay, how private? I, I, I guess I don't really have... I'm trying to think about what's on my phone. I have some of the videos that I edit and things like that. I have like drawings and stuff. I guess I have conversations. There's, there's a few groups where I talk where I'm like, but most of the things I say on my phone to other people are things I would say on this YouTube channel, are things I say to in public, are things I post on Facebook. This is information you can find because it's a lot easier to live your life in that kind of... And okay, we've, I've, I've had a series about this and we'll get back to it. We're talking about, is it easier to live your life honestly? It's, it's, it may not be easier, but it's less complicated. It's, it's a lot less complicated to just be honest and just say what you think. And it's not simple. It's, it's not simple to get into that situation. It might be, it may be complex to actually get, into, get your life into a situation where you can be more truly yourself and more honest with people around you because there might be some things where if you're honest you could lose your job you could do this and you've invested so much and you live in a location you need that money and you so through so these things you have people expect on you people are relying on you and I'm at a point where yes I might not have so much of that so I'm like yeah I can do that but then now as I'm building up and I'm thinking like getting these kind of things how how do I go about this and still maintain 
this honesty that I have, this openness that I have. But um, anyway, uh, Don Lemon, I, I don't know where all this was. If if this, I guess this is a, this has taken a lot of information, a lot of information he's talking here, but he, he had to take, he's talking about the phone. He knew that it was MAGA country people right after the attack, a few days after the attack. He knew the phone wasn't turned in a few days after the attack. He still went on the Red Table show, I think a week later, and was like, yes, there's none of this chill. I don't know. I, 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 I don't think he was covering it as much on his show, but he went on as a personal person, in out of his, out of his position as a CNN anchor. He went on to a separate show and was talking about his personal life. So I guess there's some kind of difference in that. But uh, there's a lot of people, compatriots of him, um, who are actually... And that's one thing I wonder. You know, when people say somebody's writing on Twitter, when they talk about Donald Trump writing on Twitter, and I know it's the President of the United States Twitter handle, they say that's his true beliefs, that's what he truly means. But then now, supposedly, I'm supposed to take what these people are saying on Twitter and in personal life, separate from their actual professions. The double standards there, I'm, I'm not going to accept them. The handover? Officer, I have personal things on here. I don't want people to see. I'm trusting you, but I want these guys to be caught. So here is my phone. I don't know if they just didn't expect that was going to happen. Um, I I haven't backed up my phone in a while, but if, if I had the situation like this, um, a lot of these apps, they back up, they archive your things on the phone themselves, on the app themselves. You can get the things back as was, as is. You can you can definitely back up your phone onto your computer. I'm I'm expecting Jesse Jesse Smollett would have access to a computer. He might even have access to the the uh, like an iCloud type thing where it's an independent where it's where you can just back up your computer to a to a cloud system automatically. So you just back that up and you back it up to a cloud system. And then you say, okay, now these are things that um, this is how my phone was. So if it comes back different, altered, you can say, okay, this was changed. These people took these things from my phone. But I guess some things you might not be able to know if you somehow, I mean, if you suspect or if you think MAGA people are that evil, that that's the kind of world that you exist in where um, these demons exist, you could probably think a lot of people do very nefarious things with the information that at the police station with the things that you take out. And this is one thing I do understand. I, Okay, from the libertarian kind of point of view, taxation is theft. I, I've gone more to like extortion uh, kind of situation. But then is everybody evil who actually, is everybody a bad person? The evil word is used there a lot, evil and hate. And, no, I, I don't think I don't think these are hateful people. These people are just trying to do their jobs. And yes, the, the way they're doing their jobs through being paid through taxation is something I disagree with. I find some level of immorality with it. But most of the people who are doing that cannot truly accept in their minds that taxation is extortion and still hold their jobs. Very few of the people in that kind of situation truly understand it that way. And that's why you, your mind works in amazing ways to kind of compartmentalize and get that out there. So so you can keep going to your day to day because that's the key. Your organism, you just try to live. Most organisms don't want to kill, like just go out and brutally kill other organisms just for the hell of it. But it still comes from the point where they're like, hey, for me to continue living, I'm going to kill this organism. And it comes closer to closer to closer where the more the more they care about an organism, the less it's going to take for them to do it, where they would go to sacrifice themselves for that other organism because they value the life of that other organism over theirs. It gets to a point where you get close enough where someone's like, it would be complete pacifist, but if you try to hurt my kid, I'm killing you. I'm fighting back. So there's that kind of point where it's like, okay, I understand there is some level of like, okay, I'm going to avoid doing things that are going to harm me. I'm going to avoid this kind of situation. So I can understand why they would want to get to some kind of point where like, I'm going to avoid dealing with police. But if you think there's that kind of threat, the kind of life that you're living in, it's, 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 it's a tough thing. Um, yeah. The details just didn't seem to add up. Jesse went on with Robin Roberts last week. What other ones had you heard that were inaccurate? That I had said that they were wearing MAGA hats. I never said that. I didn't need to add anything like that. They called me a They called me a There's no which way you cut it. I don't need some MAGA hat as the cherry on top of some racist Sunday. You know what? He didn't need some MAGA hat on top of all that. If even half or less happened the way he said it, it's bad enough. 
Now, just one thing on that interview. Uh, some people were watching that interview saying she was too soft on him. Uh, some people were watching that interview saying, oh, she was on to him. She knew what he, what was happening. That's another thing. Um, if one thing this, this story and many other stories should continue to show you is how different things happen for the same reasons, how we're living in these countless reality tunnels, interacting with the same actual widgets and uh, things that are actually physically exist. Because reality exists, but then your reality tunnel, I think, is how you observe and navigate actual reality. So there are actually things in reality, like the planet is physically there without you actually having to observe the planet. So that's there. But your reality tunnel is how you live on that tunnel, how you observe that tunnel, how you observe the Earth during your time in this corporeal body, corporal body that we have. And then I don't know, there might be stuff after, there might be stuff before, but um, that's 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 not something I can speak on. Um, I have some theories. I have a lot of questions. I have a lot of interest in that stuff, but that's that's enough for this video. But um, so we come to this point where people saw that same exact interview and yet they had very varied um, understandings of what was going on. Some people were watching it, uh, I think like Trevor Noah, now he might have been joking about this Daily Show, you can't really tell these kind of things. Uh, he was talking about how the guy needs an Emmy because of really good acting. Yet some other people were seeing it and saying, look, that's the worst acting ever. I can completely tell this guy is lying. So from the same exact things. Now, um, some people were saying outside of Don, I mean of uh, Trevor Noah, and they were talking about it just completely out. And uh, they were like, yeah, we are completely... There's a lot of lights. There's a, there's a lot of mixed race people who are claiming to be black. All these positions. Taking jobs away from dark-skinned brothers out there. Why well, you give your job to somebody who's 100%? Take your ancestry, trust Don Lemon. Trevor Noah. We know Trevor Noah's half. He's, he's just from South Africa. He knows. Jesse Smollett. You were there in the show, Umpire. All, all those people. Light-skinned people. All these light-skinned people. Get some dark-skinned... I'm kidding. I don't, I don't really care about that stuff. But um, that's just something I kind of observed that um, I need to do a separate video on this thing because I think when you go to these ancestry trusts and things like that <laughs> this really funny thing of Elizabeth Warren like when, when ancestry.com says you're 0.02% uh, <laughs> African and then it's like it's like Black Panther's body but then with her head on it but um, you see a lot of people have seen that and then now they, they find out what they are and then they go oh, this is part of my culture I don't really give a damn I might me my culture, me, started when I was born and until I died. That's that's what I care about. That's what makes me me. And that's due to, again, I said I've had a very odd life and I understand my life circumstances have been part of why I can see the world in this way. And then there's other things, uh, I think, uh, yeah, there's other things to that as well. Just questioning and having access to the internet and having the time to actually get in all this information, answer questions, ask more questions and things like this. Um, but a big percentage of african-american community the black community in the united states of america has actual ancestry of people of european origins they might be people who their their parents whereas their 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 father was actually somebody who fought in the civil war maybe they had a, a, a white um a white ancestor who fought in the civil war on the on the union side against the confederacy and his main thing was because he truly loved he truly wanted to end racism and end the slavery and things like that. And he went out there and he, he had somebody was, was a freed slave would was in this had escaped the South and come up to the North and he ended up marrying this woman and he ended up, um, he ended up having a kid with her and, and he knew the rest of her family or she'd been treated this kind of way in the, in the South. And then she felt, he thought, I have to go out there and fight for you and my family and just, and other people who are involved in this. And then he died in the war or, or he was a, some kind of hero in some kind of battle and things like that. But now that is somebody who's your great, 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 great grandfather. But because you're black and you don't really embrace part of, of, part of who you are in that ancestral sense, they could lose that connection. Whereas if they had an ability to completely just accept that part of them, that could actually tie them closer in to the to the country, to this place, to this nation. They could be like, we actually are part of the fabric of this nation, yet they close off aspects of them. They close off these parts of them. To me, with the President of Barack Obama, I think for me, the most amazing thing still to this day about him was that he was a son of somebody who was an immigrant. His mother was a single mother because the, the, the dad was really there for him. He went to another country. He was raised most uh, for a large part of his life in, in uh, Indonesia. He actually was around the Muslim faith. Then he came back. He was in the Christian faith. So he's somebody who's been in a lot of these things. He was the example of this melting pot. I think I thought that was a lot better of a thing, a lot more... 
expressive of what America was to actually embrace that. And I think it would have been a whole different presidency if he had embraced that and actually gone with that and brought a lot more unision into the country as an example of that. But no, this, this, they went the division route instead, and I think that's unfortunate. And I think this part of that, white privilege, um, this kind of dislike where they say, they say white people today are privileged and responsible for all these negative things that happened to the black community and other communities because of a small percentage of white ancestors who did things hundreds of years back in slavery. So if they say that possible connection leads you to this privilege, so you might not even be completely connected to somebody who had a slave, then that means anybody who's connected with those white people in the past has that kind of privilege, has that kind of oppression and power today. So if they were able to the reason they can't accept, part of the reason some of them can't accept that white part of their themselves is because to accept that part, you'd have to also negate this whole idea of just automatic white privilege because some of these people will find out that they're actually a lot closer genetically related to people who actually had slaves, whereas some of these white people that they're talking about now having this privilege might have been indentured servants, may have been slaves, may have just come over and just been working on a farm by themselves. They may have just been um, people just going out to the, to the Wild West and uh, pioneers, not pioneers, just people who were just doing work without, they might have been people who worked in the North and actually worked with uh, minorities and black people in, in, in just regular jobs and things like that. So once you start going to the actual content of the people's character, what they actually did, um, I think that kind of negates some of this whole racial basis bias type of things. Uh, and that, I think that's part of the hurdle that's that's preventing um, the country from being as united as, as it could be. We shouldn't forget, innocent until proven guilty, of course. Innocent until proven guilty. But like I said, a lot of this just doesn't add up. And Now, with that one, I think, I think you can find examples of Don Lemon judging people who are still in the court of public, not the court of public, I mean, who are still not found guilty. Now, people like Donald Trump, I think he's already expressed how he thinks he's racist, how he thinks he's this, how he thinks he's that. And um, I haven't found any actual guilty evidence for him um, being any of those things yet. Um, as I said, with some of these things, they're never actually going to say, hey, Donald Trump, you're guilty of being racist and we're going to charge you with this kind of situation. They can do it in the court of public opinion without ever actually being accountable for a false accusation when you keep it in that kind of sense. Like, I don't know what he said about Brett Kavanaugh, uh, the, the guy who was this, uh, you know, he's in the Supreme Court when he was in, in going through that kind of back and forth with uh, Christine Blasey Ford or something. I don't know what he was saying about this, but... I am pretty sure Don Lemon has judged some people uh, before they were found guilty. If Jussie's story isn't true, he squandered the goodwill of a whole lot of people. I don't think it was goodwill. I think it was more bias. And I think the goodwill that's been squandered is by people like you and uh, people who came out and supported him. Um, Jussie is just Jussie. Uh, I don't think most people really had... And that's the thing. They made me, this again with me, if you see the amount of photos and how ingrained Jesse Smollett has been in a certain community that I am not a part of, I'm not really aware of, he's with so many celebrities. He's really liked within these, com not liked, I'm not going to assume liked, I don't know, but he's connected with these people. Where if this was a situation where there was somebody who, like, who, like, they can't talk, okay, Roger Stone, I think, does have some kind of close relationship with Donald A. Trump from the past and things like that. They, they're, they're, they might actually have some kind of friendship, like they know who each other are. But, um, if you have a situation like people are like, oh, there's a photo of Donald Trump like David Duke, it's horrible, blah, 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 they go on these things, that means he does this, that means he does this. So can we, can we take that photo of like President Obama with, can we take that photo, there's a, there's a video of Michelle Obama dancing uh, with uh, with Jussie Smollett. Can we watch this video and be like, you wouldn't dance with somebody who you're not familiar with? That means anything Michelle Obama says is a hoax. The, the far-reaching thing of this is, is, is pretty crazy. He even lie to a lot of people if it's not true including me and that's not cool he squandered the goodwill of very and you see right there that admission um don lemon um somebody who you know can lie to you and you can't tell that person is lying if this turns out to be what it is i mean turns out to be he lied about this thing then who's to tell me how am i going to trust what you do in your reporting thing you know, that's why 
if you get to a situation where you just report and you say, this is the information that I have received and here is that information, here is the evidence behind it, you stick to that as a reporter, then your personal failings and judgment and things like that are not really called into question. They're like, how good is this person at collecting data and telling me this data in a way that I can understand it? If you get to that kind of situation, then people can be like, yeah, we come to this thing. Yeah, I know he might have had a divorce. He may have had this kind of situations. He may have gotten this fight with somebody. He may have lost money by betting and investing on this. But that's his personal life. When it comes to his job, which is telling me information, I can trust him on this. But when you get to editor, ed, um, giving opinions, editorializing things, that comes now into like your personal judgment. Now, people could say, if... I don't trust your judgment on climate change. I don't trust your judgment on Donald Trump being a threat. I don't trust your government on uh, your judgment on it not being in a, not being a, a national emergency that millions of people have been entering the United States of America. I don't trust your judgment on you saying that oh, um, this black people have actually been mistreated in this way. It's really tough to be a gay man because how can you actually give your opinion on these things when you're not able to tell when somebody who you know, who you think is a good person, is lying very high profile people who may one day be running this country like Kamala Harris and Cory Booker and people like President Trump. I want to ask you about Jesse Smollett. Have you heard about that story? The actor from Empire who was allegedly attacked with racist and homophobic. Um, that I can tell you is horrible. I've seen it uh, last night. I think that's horrible. Uh, it doesn't get worse as far as I'm concerned. And you see, that is a hor to me, that is a disgusting thing that this guy has just done. And I said it in specific words. This is this is what I'm talking about with CNN. This is this is a twisting. You're talking about Cory Booker, Kamala Harris. We're saying it's a modern day lynching. They were saying specifically they were co-signing a hundred. They were co-signing and saying it is a completely racist thing. This is modern day lynching. This is because of this. Um, what's it called? Um, Maxine Waters. She was like, "This is coming from the coming from Trump." People were like, "It's coming from 45. This is coming from the top. Trump needs to say something about this. This is an environment that's been created by Trump." So they were they were putting in extra. They were putting mustard. They're putting all the toppings on that burger, on that on this apparent nothing burger, this fall burger, this like tofu burger, tofu burger, tofu news burger. Um, this tofu news burger. That's what they were putting on it. They were putting all the toppings, all the fixings, all the sides, all the extras, everything on that. Getting, put everything in there. Go in the kitchen. Go to the supermarket in the store and buy new ingredients and put some more toppings on this burger. That's what they were doing with it. Yet they're good to go with that. As I mentioned before, that's a rather nebulous thing. What do you expect the President of the United States of America to say? I don't believe this guy. I mean, he's just like, look, this isn't reported. He was going off of what the police say. The police report had said this person has done this, and he's going off the police report. And yes, if the police report is correct, it was completely horrible. Do you think Trump is sitting there going Twitter, going through these things, hearing the details of actually what's going on, hearing that the phone wasn't turned in, hearing that the people shouted in the Niagara country was 2 a.m. in the morning? Like, you know, he's like, okay, Trump is going on the thing where the police have released this. If those things actually happened, as improbable as they may have been, he's not going to, he's like, then it's, yes, it's a horrible thing. Hate crimes are horrible. And that's what he said. He's been saying that for a while. This whole idea that Trump is racist. No. But anyway, so they're going to use that clip. They're not going to use any of the other clips or Twitter or other things of people who are on their side saying a lot more horrible, a lot more distinct and judgmental things based off of the same little amount of information that Trump had. They're not going to talk about that. They're not going to talk about the Covington kind of situation, the Covington, uh, the Nick Sandelman student who was, uh, who was, Washington Post is being sued for $250 million. That's an amazing thing going with that. Well, he released a thing and said, yeah, go get these people because these people lied about you. Is that a hate crime? Is, now that case situation, is, is a false allegation of a hate crime towards somebody a hate crime? That's what's now being asked in this kind of situation. But no, they're going to go with the Don. Oh, let's see what Don Lemon says. Like I said, there were questions about Justice's story from the very beginning, questions he still needs to answer. Innocent until proven guilty, but a whole lot of people want to hear from him. What happened, Jesse? Uh, 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 he looks like John Goodman there. Um, anyway, so that's that's the video. Um, that, that's the video. And yet, yeah, this the the Mueller thing is ending soon. It's gonna be a separate video on that. But um, so yeah, that's it for now. Uh, thanks for watching the video. Let me know what you guys think. There's been a lot of things going on with this. I talked about a lot of different things in this video. Really, again, thanks a lot for watching. 
Um, links below to the merchandise store. You can buy some stuff there. Help me out. I think I got some pretty decent designs. Check them out. Let me know what you think. Um, let me know what you think about this thing. This this thing is big. I think it's I think it's big. I think this is one of those moments where it's like you know, a straw that broke the camel's back. But it's kind of one of like the. Oh, it's like a, a bend. I don't know. Uh, maybe you're like going in a river. I, I don't know. Let me let me pause. Okay, I, I think this might be might be a better um, analogy. So it's maybe like an avalanche. You know, avalanches don't really start automatically. There's normally like stuff that's going on under the surface. Let's say with the snow, with rocks, whatever. It's raining or whatever kind of situation where there's particles, small particles kind of moving into one position and like a crack starts happening and it's like starts cracking and it's like... Okay, then then um, there's a situation where like the trees or whatever is on the hill holding those things down. They start getting weaker and weaker, slowly by slowly, because of the pressures and things like that. And then inevitably, there's that one kind of big thing. Maybe a loud sound happens, or one of those trees that's getting weaker finally like drops, gets pulled over, and then it drops down and hits the snow or hits the soil. And then those reverberations kind of get sent out. And then all those smaller things that had been happening to kind of uh, weaken this slope or weaken all this all this material all of a sudden that lets go then you get the big avalanche happening i think this jussie small thing is kind of like that to people just understanding we don't really have to accept everything the media speaks of in this way they're going to start questioning how they look at these reports and things like that how they assume these things about people there's going to be enough times where so many of these people have actually been commenting about other situations where you're going to go back in and you're going to see their Twitters, you're going to see their history and you're going to be like, wait, these people have repeatedly been wrong about these things. They've been crying about or warning about these things and repeatedly, repeatedly, repeatedly these people are wrong. There's no actual threat that these people are talking about and it's going to lead to a better world. I think the closer you are to reality, the closer you are to observe that and to understand that and take that in, the better. Now, some things you might encounter in reality are going to be a lot more... It's going to take a lot of effort on your end, and you might need to learn some new things in order to be able to understand and uh, comprehend and do something with this material. There may be like some inconvenient truths, but I, th I, I don't even like that inconvenient truth. I need to think of a better term. But there may be some things where you're not ready to actually do something with it, and then it might be a challenge to you to actually adjust to find a way to take that in. You know, it's kind of like you get some, you might get some really cool new technology, but then like, your computer might need to, you might need to up, update the OS of your computer in order to run these new apps or get access to these new features and things like that. But unfortunately, one thing I'm starting to realize is they are get, it does get to some points where your computer might be too old where it can't really update the new OS, that you can't actually use these apps. So I don't really consider that inconvenient information because those new apps are still as valid and I would say those new apps are arguably better than the old apps, but there are some points where those new people, that new information, that new ability might not be able to be used by that person. And um, I know that gets, you know, you can't teach an old dog new tricks. I know that gets to, to, to everyone and that's why I'm hopefully, part of the reason I'm making these videos, get, getting out here, is because I, I like getting new information and I know there's going to be some situations where I might have limitations from my history and my just bi biology, genetics, other reasons where I'm not able to really absorb new information and new ideas, but I'm definitely open to them. If you can tell me new ways of looking at things, where I'm wrong, where, where you think I was right, where you think I should push further in one direction, where you think I might be kind of going astray, let me know. Uh, one of the one of the main things I get after these videos is the interaction in the comment section, talking to people and sharing the ideas and um, seeing how we how, see if our reality tunnels can kind of touch for a while and kind of go together and we can see some things and then we go to our separate places and maybe we meet up later in the future. But yeah, it's it's thanks for watching. Goodbye.